YouTube, it's Missy, and today I'm here to share with you guys my September wrap-up. I think it's September. It is the month of October. I'm pretty sure I read all of these in September. Let's get started. <laughs> the first one I want to talk about is I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. Uh, this is the late wife of Paxton. Paxton. What is his name? Patton, not Paxton. Patton, Patton Oswalt. Um, he's a comedian, and I've seen him over the years, but I've never really like liked his comedy. I don't know why. He was just not like super popular in in my comedy realm. Like I'm like more of a Bill Burr kind of thing, or a Jack Black, or um, Chris Rock. Those are the kind of um, comedians I usually watch. Anyways, uh, this book, let me tell you. So I have been buddy reading nonstop with Ashley, um, my friend <laughs> who buddy reads with me. Uh, she's a subscriber here on um, YouTube, now uh, a very good friend of mine. We talk every day. And uh, we decided that we were going to buddy read books in order. So we were going to do one young adult, one adult, and then one nonfiction, um, preferably a true crime. And so that's what we've been doing back to back to back to back. So we've been doing um, them in order. Right now we are currently reading our adult book and then we have to find another crime book to, to read. Now I have read true crime in the past and it has always been written by a man and it was very dry. I don't mind it being dry because I like the facts of the case. Like, that's why I'm reading it. I'm very much into procedural, um, like, murder mysteries and thrillers. I really like reading from the perspective of the detective and what they do um, to catch the killer. I love that. So this was, uh, it was so like one of those chef's kiss kind of thing. It was so good because not only did it give you the facts of the Golden State Killer, but it also gave you an insight into the victims, more so than the killer, which I really appreciated. Um, you have the Golden State Killer who raped 50 women, killed 10 people, and was on the hunt. Like, like he was, they were actively trying to catch this man for 40 years. And it's insane that they only just recently caught him and if you have watched the HBO series which is six episodes it is so good not only is it well um, like the cinematography is amazing the cutscenes the transitions uh, the way they flow the the book and the author and the victims and um, other detectives that she worked with over the years and how um, Patton comes in and, and gives his two cents and they have pictures of Alice, their daughter. It's just like, ah, oh, the tears, the emotional uh, turmoil that I was going through, not only for the victims of this book, but also for Michelle in general. Um, so if you have a trigger on rape, you might not want to read this. It is, uh, it's not like super graphic, uh, but at the same time, it does go over the rape and the killings of the couples and occasionally a single uh, female. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this because it focused so much on the victims. Normally what happens is Ted Bundy or, um, you know, the Zodiac Killer or all of these serial killers, they get their t 15 minutes of fame and we never know their victims. We never know what those people had to go through. Now, with the Golden State Killer, we had 50 rape victims that, you know, lived to tell the tale, whereas um, a lot of the other serial killers um, slash rapists, maybe they don't have the same amount of women able to talk about it. But I did like how um, 
sensitive Michelle was and how cautious she was when she was interviewing these people and how she just told them straight up, I am so interested in this case because I want to catch this killer. I'm not like interested in your story because I'm glamorizing it or trying to make a buck from it. Um, and I'm definitely not making it to where I'm making fun of you or any kind of weird um, thing surrounding the fact that they were the victims of the serial killer. I just, I really thought that she did an amazing job. And the sad thing is, the Golden State Killer was caught in 2018. Um, Michelle passed away in 2016. She died from an accidental overdose. Um, she was having really bad nightmares from trying to catch this killer and I mean not like this woman did not just you know talk to detectives she immersed herself in this case I don't know how a civilian was able to go into all of these police departments and ask for their their cold case files and get away with them like she had 32 boxes that she was allowed to take home to research to find information and clues to help these detectives because detectives only have so many hours of like manpower that they're allowed to um, allocate for like cold cases um, but she had a infinite amount of time and so she was such an asset and it makes me really angry the fact that the police departments said she didn't do much in helping the killer yeah I get that she didn't like physically uh, point him out and tell them exactly what house he lived in and exactly what his name was but she did and I mean she worked on this for years and she got the police on the right track with the whole 23andMe with all of the DNA um, banking that we do nowadays she's the one who started that she's the one who penned his name as the Golden State Killer she's the one who brought all of this attention back to this cold case um, that these victims never thought that they would you know be seeing their aggressor caught and put in jail after all these years so wow I mean if you have never read a true crime and you wanted to delve into it this would be the perfect opportunity definitely pick up this book it's got pictures in it of the victims um, it, it talks about the detectives in here and you know just to know that the detectives have been on this case for like 40 years too they're old men now and they could not grapple um, the fact that this murderer and rapist was getting away all these years and they just continued to work on it and I feel I feel like like proud I don't know it's like like an after like a, a proud person from a distance you know like I feel so good for these detectives to know that they can finally rest you know they can they can die in peace and know that the person that they were looking for all these years has been caught and is now in prison um yeah, and when it talks about one woman's obsessive search for the Golden State Killer, it was pretty darn obsessive. Um, once you're done reading this, absolutely pick up the HBO um, series and watch it because it's kind of like um, like a special features. You know how I really like extra information on things that I've either watched or read. And there's stuff in here that you don't see um, personal stories from Michelle that is in the docu-series that's not in the book uh, that's really touching and also all the reactions with the victims. They talk about the victims um, in the book obviously but they don't talk about the present victims and how much um, this meant to them of the catching of the Golden State Killer and Michelle coming together and, and bringing their stories um, out into the world all these women now have each other to um, to grasp on to and they didn't have that before they felt like they were um, by themselves even though they knew that there was all these other women that went through the same thing that they went through they didn't know them by name and now all these women have like you know a family a sister among each other um, 
so that way they can heal. Anyways, great, great, great book. Um, Ashley and I just devoured that. The next book um, that I buddy read was Broken Harbor by Tana French. This is the fourth book in the Dublin Murder Squad series. Um, this is a beast of a book. Not even a beast. Like, I'm just so used to reading shorter books lately. Uh, like, the most, it's been like 300, and this was 464 pages. But it was so good. Uh... Maddie from the Maddie Hatter, I will leave her channel link down below. This is the one I've been buddy reading, or she's the one I've been buddy reading this series with over the years. This is the fourth book, and I think we've read one book a year, maybe? Is that right, Maddie? We've been working, working on this series for years, very, very slowly. Um, her and I both really enjoy this series. Uh, just we like some books more than others. I really, really liked this book. Um, there is two different kinds of stories that are taking place within uh, this series. And that is the really hardcore thriller aspect and then the family drama aspect. There's two stories that were very heavily family oriented. Um, this one and the previous one. I can't remember what the title of that one is called. Something Place? Secret Place? No. I don't think it matters. Um, but yeah, there's, there's two different kinds. This one, like I said, is very family uh, driven and it was a good thing. I really enjoyed it. It's about a detective named Kennedy who has um, been working in the murder squad for like 20 years I think and he's the top dog in the precinct uh, and so he, since he's been on the top for a really long time it's his job to train the newbies that come in to murder and so right now he's working with a guy named Richie um, Curran who just came out of what do they call it? Traffic? Like they do traffic cops and everything? I think he just came out of traffic. So now he's in murder and he's being taught the ropes. And what they have here, and this is in every single uh, book, is a place that is essential to our main character. So this is called Broken Harbor, which is a seaside camp area in um, Ireland that our main character used to go to. They call it caravans. I don't know if caravans are like mobile homes or like trailers. I think they're the same thing from, you know, what we what use in the United States. But they would caravan to this place and um, they would spend like a week or something during summer and they would you know, swim and play with their friends and everything else. So our main character used to go to Broken Harbor when he was younger. But now it's called something else and they have put up new home developments there. However, it's such a far drive from like the main like Dublin or other major cities in Ireland that nobody really took the bait of purchasing houses there and the the market kind of crashed. And so there's like half-built homes, homes that are kind of like just rubble, like it's not even a foundation yet. It was just like markers being built. And then there's some homes that are actually fully developed, but they were rushing to make these houses to, you know, get a quick buck. And um, what happened was that the houses weren't built very well. And so the people living there pretty much bought shanties and they're going to be in debt for their whole lives trying to pay off this crappy mortgage on a house that they don't want that is never going to be prosperous and they probably won't be able to sell so they're kind of like SOL with this whole scenario. Now the murder takes place in this new development housing area. It's a family of four. There's a wife, a husband, and two children. And um, the husband and the two kids are murdered and the wife is in critical condition and she is uh, picked up and you know sent to the hospital. And the entire book is us trying to figure out who the killer is of you know this dad and the two children. 
but we have all of the drama of our main character and his siblings um, and then we have the drama of the new the new guy where our main character Kennedy is trying to get him in the mindset of being able to work in murder that means going to the autopsies and not being squeamish when it comes to dead bodies knowing when it's appropriate to um, be you know stronger on the um, the witnesses to get information or when it's you know time to back off and be more um, caring and considerate and all that other stuff because maybe they'll give you more information that way. I really really liked it. The ending was something I was not expecting and the twist in this story again I wasn't expecting it. I was very sad when I found out the twist. I was like what? Why? Why would this happen? And it's it's so, like, possible. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes you'll, you'll read a, a thriller or a murder mystery, and you're like, that would never happen. This is absolutely something I could see happening, especially if you have a really caring personality and you're just not fit for murder. This is something that I could definitely see happening. So if you, ha if you liked Into the Woods by Tana French and you haven't continued on with the series, I would definitely pick up the rest of the books. They are so good. They all start off with the main character, which has been seen in other books, so it doesn't necessarily have to be read in order. I just, that's just my personality. I have to read them in order. Um, but they don't have anything to do with each other besides the fact that all of the um, detectives all work in murder in the same Dublin murder squad unit. And so in each book we will see the same um, chief of, of O'Kelly? O O'Kelly? No. O'Reilly? No. I think it's O'Kelly. Um, he's the main, like the head of the the precinct, and so we see him in every single book, and then we see all of the detectives throughout the books, either by name or you know we learn a little bit about them. But this one is about Kennedy, and I think the next one is about another guy we just read about in a, the last book. So we'll see. I really, really like these. I don't know if I did it justice by the review but remember all of my reviews will be down below for my goodreads and like i say in all my videos <laughs> i can write a review way better than i can speak a review to you guys because i get like fart bubbles in my head and then i forget what i want to say so yes great great adult read and then the next book that I buddy read with Ashley is they all fall down by Roxanne St. Clair I got this book ages ago it's been sitting on my shelves for at least four years when did this come out it came out in 2014 I think I wanted this right when it came out and I waited about a year before it was like on super sale at book outlet and then I purchased it probably for like two dollars and um, I really liked the cover keep that out of the video I really liked the cover I thought it was cute that all of the girls are lying on a plate because it kind of looks like blood but it's just it's just a plate um, so I was really excited to read this and it was kind of awful and I gave it three stars and I will definitely be giving this away in a trade away for you guys. Um, it says every girl would die to be on this list. So in this town, I can't even remember what the town is called, um, there is a list that takes place and it's been happening for the last mm, like 20 years I think. 20 or 30 years. I want to say 20. I think 30 might be too much. So there's this list. It's called the hottie list. And every year, 10 girls are chosen for, to be on this hottie list. And it's also known throughout the, the girls that are, have been on the list that there is a curse when it comes to being on the list. Because over the years, either one or two girls might die from the list. It might be 
during their reign on the list or it might be years later but all the women or and girls have died an accidental death like um being, you know, dying from um, peanut allergy or um, falling off of a ladder and breaking their back or um, getting electrocuted, you know, accidentally by something, yada, yada, yada. So uh, when our main character, I don't even know her name anymore. What is her name? Kenzie. <laughs> when Kenzie is chosen to be on this list, her and Molly are BFFs, and they are studious, and they really want to get into college, and they want to do good in school, and they are good girls, like, through and through. They don't drink. They don't go to parties. Um, but once Kenzie's on the list, Molly's like, you, you must continue on with this list, and you must let me come with you. I want to ride on your coattails. I also want to be popular. And Kenzie's like, I'm not wanting to be a part of these people. I think it's stupid. Um, I'm not interested in any kind of clout or fame from this. And how can they, how can these people like me today, but yesterday I was garbage? Like, all of a sudden they like me. Why? Because I'm on a list. My face hasn't changed. My personality hasn't changed. And yet, and Molly's like, shut up. Be happy that you're on the list and bring me with you. So I didn't like Molly because that's just disgusting. And I liked Kenzie for the most part, but she was so, um, she was kind of whiny at times. And again, this is a YA, so the girls are going to be whiny. I don't know why you can't just have a full-blown kick-ass female not doing like anything major, like not like a secret agent kick-ass female, just a strong woman who says no. Why can't we have <laughs> regular strong women that go about their day like normal and they say no, you know, at a good amount, like, you know, at least a couple times a day. No, I don't want to do that. Instead of sucking up to people and being yes women for no reason and being doormats. Like it just, uh, I hate it. I hate it. So Kenzie is now enveloped into this list with all these gr girls, some of them are cheerleaders, some of them are just, you know, dumb and, and, and pretty, the stupid pretty girls, and um, there's one really pretty black chick on here that um, is kind of like the person that Kenzie goes to because both of them are like, this is garbage and stupid, and so they both like roll their eyes at, um, at this craziness of the hottie list because they didn't expect to be on it and um and then they have to deal with like josh who is like this cute jock who really wants to go out with kenzie and he's the one that has all of the parties and rex's um grandfather owns the property that they're all having this party at and he allows his uh grandson to underage drink and have all of these parties and the girls are all there and I don't, I don't appreciate, um, I know some people don't mind their, their teenagers drinking at home because then that way they're in a safe space, but, um, I wouldn't allow my child and their friends to drink at my house. If say we were at a wedding and my 15 year old wanted a wine cooler, okay, maybe I would allow that when it wasn't like, it didn't have to do with other people's children. It's it's one thing for me to allow my son have an alcoholic beverage that's not very high on the alcoholic like percentage scale. And it's another to have other people's children come to your house. Wow, I'm going on a mom tangent, doesn't matter. All right, so this book, that's all it's about. It's about the haughty list and about this secret society of girls and about this older man who has parties at his house that has something to do with the hottie list and about a curse on these girls and it's kind of interweaven woven into everybody's kind of like got their hands in it and so it's hard to tell who the the, the killer is because 
I don't care if it's a spoiler. <laughs> I don't even know how many are going to read this book. Uh, there is a killer. It's not a curse. There. That's the only thing I'm going to give away. They have to figure out who the killer is. And I wasn't expecting it. I should have, but I wasn't. I was thinking it was somebody else. And Kenzie kind of saves the day at the end. And everybody is fine and dandy. And then the book ends. So three stars. Ashley gave it 2.5, um, which is also acceptable for the story. It's not something that you'll want to reread. It was very fast, so we read it really quickly. Um, it kept our interest, so it's not like it was slow and boring, but Ashley said if she wasn't reading it with me, she would have DNF'd it, and I don't DNF books unless it's like severely slow. Like, like after two pages, I'm falling asleep, and then I tend to leave it on my graveyard shelf until I get tired of seeing it, and then I finally give it away. All right, and then the very last book I read in the month of September is The Remaking by Clay McLeod Chapman. I received this from Cork, right? Yeah, from Cork Books uh, just last week. I showed it to you guys on Instagram, I believe, and I literally read this entire thing in one sitting. I never do that. I read this last Saturday, I think. I think it was last Saturday. Maybe it was last Sunday. I stayed up until 3.30 in the morning and completed this book. And I never do that. Is it worth... Uh, I think I gave this book four stars. 3.5 or four stars. I might... If I gave it four, I might drop it down to 3.5. Um, I don't think I'll be rereading this book. So I think I'm actually going to be giving it away but I'm still on the fence whether I want to keep it or not um so this is about a girl who is in a in a horror movie that's an independent film when she was little she was like 10 I think I think she was 10 so this is about a legend there's a place called Pilot's Creek and the uh, the director of this movie came from Pilot's Creek and he heard an old man in his town um, tell him the story of Ella Louise and her daughter Jessica. Now Pilot's Creek everybody believes in the witch or the little witch girl of Pilot's Creek. Everybody believes in her and this story has been passed down from generation to generation and I, it hasn't <gasps> Oops. I accidentally scratched my tattoo. I did not mean to do that. Yikes. Okay. Um, so, everybody's been talking about these two women. Well, not women. One's a woman, one's a girl. Let's go back. Everybody knows the legend of the little witch girl. And they've been passing it down from generation to generation. I don't know how long it's been going on. Um but not 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 that long i think i think in like the in a hundred years maybe that's how long the witch has been a part of the um of the town and so ella louise was born from parents that were religious and did everything that they were supposed to do within the town they were part of society and Ella Louise came out and she didn't smile and she didn't want to be a part of anything girly and she didn't want to be a part of her mom, um, her like debutante kind of thing and she didn't want any part of it. And so finally everybody in the town, because it's a small town, they were very superstitious. They are like, you know what, this lady's a witch and we don't want her in town anymore. So they kind of like drew, drove her out and so she moved into the woods and while she was out there she had a baby girl and they all thought oh my gosh where did this baby come from? Who would have you know done that with her? It must have been um, devil spawn. The devil gave, gave you know impregnated her and now she's having the devil's child. And so everybody believed that Ella Louise was a witch but her daughter was stronger in the force. So Jessica was stronger in her powers of being a witch and together they picked herbs and they had their own like apocryph apocryphary? How do you say it? Apocryphary. 
I think that's how you say it, out there in the woods. And people, even though they were judgmental and they didn't like the fact that she was a witch, in every single story I've ever read, when it comes to witches, people still go out and see them and get remedies and medicines from these people, even though they are totally talking crap about them in the town. It doesn't make any sense. How can you hate somebody and also use them for good? Like, if you know that they're keeping you from getting sick, then why do you think that they're fake? Regardless, it doesn't matter. Um, eventually, uh, the town gets sick of them. Something happens that I'm not going to tell you because that's part of the story. And they decide that they're going to burn the witch. And they um, remove Ella Louise from her home and they burn her at the stake and Jessica is supposed to watch this. But right before the mom burns completely, Jessica jumps in the fire and dies with her mother. So they bury the mom somewhere in the woods and then they bury Jessica on consecrated ground so that way she's forever stuck because it's holy ground and the mom's not going to be able to come and get her. Not only do they bury her on the church site, but they also put um, cement on top of her so she can never dig herself out and then they surround her grave with crosses that are holding like its arms together or intertwined. So she's like stuck there for eternity and um now the the kid is now grown up and he's had this obsession with jessica everybody in the town is obsessed with jessica and they believe that she comes to them in their dreams and continues to make her presence known so that way nobody forgets her so our director has this obsession about the story and wants to share it with the world and so our main character comes in her name is what is her name i forgot um i think the main character's name is amber pendleton so she is um brought onto the movie as jessica so she's supposed to play the little witch girl and during her taping of the film of this independent horror film um she's lost in the woods she said that ella louise asked her to follow her into the woods and of course the little girl thought it was ella louise the actress but in reality it was ella louise the witch ghost and so amber follows her into the woods and she gets freaked out and the entire set is shut down and everyone's searching for her for hours and hours and she goes to the hospital and she says ella louise brought me out here but as a little kid people are like oh she must have meant the the actress and the actress was like i didn't do that and so there was this whole debacle of how awful this this movie was but there was a cult following after years and years and years and so now everybody's obsessed with jessica now we're gonna jump forward to like 30 years and amber is now an adult and she's still trying to live off of the fame of this independent horror film um she's still going to horror conventions and signing posters and everything trying to make a quick buck it doesn't make any sense I, from you know like an outsider why wouldn't she get a regular job if you aren't cutting it as an actress anymore why would you get paid you know peanuts in just signing other people's posters and stuff when you could get a regular job and do that on the side if you wanted to and make enough money to like survive but I'm not a Amber so whatever so Eventually, Amber gets contacted by her agent that there is a new director who wants to remake the independent horror film of Jessica's Grave in his new, you know, rend rendition. And she's kind of skeptical about the whole thing. She's like, I don't understand why this guy would be to begin with. Um, why would you want to remake it? And the director is young. He's like, 20 something and he's fresh out of film school and he says you know when it comes to horror movies and this my friends right here is what is going on right now in cinema right now so he says when um when there's horror movies they want to upgrade these horror movies 
and make them fresh for a new audience. So maybe the, you know, the new generation won't watch that horror movie from back in the day because the CGI isn't good enough or maybe they don't like practical effects and they would rather have more computer generated ones. Um, maybe the story is so dated because of the technology used um, in that story and they want to upgrade it. One example would be like um, the cell. There's like a cell phone Japanese horror that at the beginning it was just like flip phones and then now it's like smartphones and it's still all like um, cutesy and everything but you can see you know one was a later was made later because of the flip phone and so that made me think about remaking films because every single time I've watched a horror movie that has been remade it has sucked and I'm talking like Carrie the new one was awful Pet Cemetery, the new one was awful um, what other movies came out oh uh, my favorite movie is Evil Dead 2, one of my favorite horror movies. And when they redid it, it sucked. Um, you just, you don't remake things that, they're making, they're remaking witches right now. Why? Angelica Houston did an amazing job as the witch. I don't want to see a new one and it's being made, not that I have anything against, uh, what's her face, Anne Hathaway. But she's not as scary as Angelica Houston. Like, are they going to transform her face like the rat women that they were in the older version? I swear to God, I hate remake remakes of horror movies. Even kid horror movies. I don't want to see them. So, this one, is, there's a remake. And they're having um, Amber, instead of play Jessica, obviously because she's too old, they want her to be Ella Louise. And the same thing happens to the new girl. She gets lost in the woods. And so we have the whole point of this story is the fact that Jessica is so strong in her paranormal strengths, right? That she's able to, beyond the grave, convince people to never forget about her. That is her legend. That is her power. She um, gets inside your mind and twists herself in there until she can't be dug out and she wants everyone to to be a part of this so when it comes to the making of the movie when it comes to the remaking of the movie at the end of the story we we have a character a side character at the very end who has a podcast and he wants to talk about Amber's um, time in both of the movies and he wants to he's like a a legend hoax expert like he's supposed to find out if these things are true or not and he tries to debunk them so that's what his podcast is about is debunking old legends and so he wants to talk to amber and again with him talking to her he's perpetuating the jessica story and he's giving out this information to more people over the internet so jessica continues to be um, present in the minds of the new generation. So overall, the book did what it was supposed to do. I didn't really like the characters. I didn't like the director of the first movie. I thought he was garbage. Um, I didn't like the, the character of the second director because he was too, also garbage. I didn't like any of the characters in this book. The mom was garbage. Um, yeah, everybody was not likable in this story. But I like the fact that even me talking about this book, Jessica has, you know, wiggled her way into my mind. And now I'm sharing the legend with you guys. Now it says here, inspired by true events. I don't know if Jessica is real. But I'm continuing her story by just giving you guys this review. So... <laughs> With that being said, those were all the books that I read in September. Four isn't that bad, especially because they were pretty long books. Um, I am currently reading two books right now. I decided that our next adult book was going to be Broken Monsters by Lauren Bukes, but she was six, 64 pages in and didn't like the way that this story was going, and so we decided to stop reading it together, I'm going to continue on by myself. And we picked up The Shuddering by Ania Alborn instead. This is a little bit shorter. It's only got 14 chapters in it, so we should be done 
in two weeks. Today we'll be reading chapter five. And if you've never read Ania Alborn, um, I don't know what her other books are like. I'm reading her in publication order. So the first one that I read was The Seed, and that one was about a demon, whereas this one is about these snow creatures that kill you only when it's snowing out. So it's 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 very strange. But it's a it's an old like scary legend where parents would tell their kids not to play outside during like a snowstorm because these creatures will come and eat you. And um they don't believe in these creatures until they actually see them for themselves. So it's pretty creepy. Uh so far it's kind of bloody and it's about a cabin more like a mansion in the woods um, where a handful of young adults are going to be doing stuff. Their father who owns the mansion is really rich and he's decided that he was going to sell the mansion in the woods and so the kids are there um, for a last hurrah before the new owners take over. And so that's where we're at now. Um, so yeah, I will probably be doing a horror TBR within the next couple of days. I do have a handful that I definitely want to get to this month, depending on how quickly I can read the books. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. That is it. I will leave timestamps down below. If you sat through this whole video, obviously you don't need timestamps, but they will be there. Um, I'll leave it in the title. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you guys are doing well and have a great week. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.